on this week's show, which is going to be focusing a lot on serial killers, uh, you talked to LAPD Chief Charlie Beck. You talked to him about a case that we've been doing for a long time, the Grim Sleeper case, and the fact that Lonnie Franklin was arrested. You were pretty impressed with the police methods that they used to catch the camera, weren't you? Well, absolutely. I'm impressed by that, but I also want to say that I'm here at AMOC, which is the command center to monitor every single plane that's in the air in the United States at any minute of a 24-hour period. And if something looks bad, they roll. And this is state of the art. 21st century. These are different agencies from all over the spectrum and they're working together. It's a, it's a real model for, for the United States. And what Charlie Beck did with the Grim Sleeper is, is something that's state of the art 21st century too because they caught the Grim Sleeper, a guy that was a suspect in eight murders over a 20 year period because of familial DNA. I've always been an advocate for DNA upon arrest. 21 states have it, every state should have it. So that's when you get arrested. Whether you're convicted or not, they take your picture, they take your fingerprints, why not swab everybody? In the 21 states that do it, they've solved hundreds and hundreds of old cold cases and gotten tons of guys out that were innocent. I said it years ago. I experienced it in my son's case. There was no DNA. It took 27 years to solve my son's case. So how they caught the Grim Sleeper was his son got arrested. They swabbed him. They ran it through the California database. Then they ran it through the FBI CODIS. Guess what comes up a hit? The DNA from those crime victims. This guy had raped and murdered eight women. He had stopped, started up years later. They got a familial DNA hit, and the LAPD started to look at the father. They followed him for two days. They got his DNA off a cup, and guess what? They solved eight murders over the span of 28 years. Now, why we're revisiting it is because in this creep's house, there were hundreds of photographs of women. The police have eliminated all but 58 photographs. So now I'm saying, you got to help us identify these women. They may be homicide victims that he dumped in dumpsters and were buried in a, in a junkyard. I don't think, nor does Charlie Beck, a friend of mine, I've known him for 20 plus years, a real cop's cop. This is a man that's through the rank and file and uses state-of-the-art stuff, and Charlie Beck says, I don't think this guy ever stopped murdering. So what we need to do in this show is people go to the website, all our great web viewers here, we need to close out those 58 pictures and get some justice for those families. You're a huge proponent of DNA upon arrest, and only 22 of the 50 states have it. Yeah, yeah. If people want to do something about that, people who are watching now, what would you tell them to do if their state doesn't have it? I would say big states like New York really need. New York has 28,000 unsolved crimes, rapes, murders, child molestation. Those guys are driving around. They've probably been arrested for DUIs. They've probably been arrested for certain things. They may never have been convicted. Every state needs to swap upon arrest. When that person isn't convicted of that crime, they purge the DNA. But think about this. It would solve thousands and thousands of old cases. It would nail many, many other serial killers. The FBI believes there's 20 serial killers at large in the United States. And you know what? It would get the innocent out of jail. I said it many times before. DNA convicts the guilty, and it frees the innocent. Every state, go to your state legislator, go to your governor and say, why the hell don't we have DNA upon arrest? If you care about the victims, and if you care about women and children, DNA upon arrest should be in every state. Right. Well, we're going to get back to shooting the show. Thanks for taking the time.